Deadliest computer virus by disrupt. The world's deadliest computer virus. All right. A 6.5 magnitude earthquake is shaking the foundations of the Bangai Islands. 93 million miles away, Mars, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter. Oh, is it a space Saturn, virus? And the sun. All Aliens hacked our hentai folders? Back at the equator, it's early morning. A student presents an idea for a senior thesis. He says the internet has become too costly for the average person. Damn, this is really well made. Holy shit. He can create a program that would retrieve Fuck. the account logins of other individuals. Hijack their internet. Thanks for reset, Tim Tom. Obviously, he wouldn't release the bug. He just wants to show he can do it before graduation. The dean's response. We do not. What does that say? Student writes. We do not produce burglocks. What is that like a Magic: The Gathering card? What the fuck is a burglock? We do not produce. P burger? No, it's not a burger. What the fuck is this? Burglars! Oh, this is a K. Oh, I thought this was a K. Burglars. He just... Uh, he forgot this part, so it looks like a K. Okay. The last line of code. He originally developed it to be geolocked to Manila. A safety net. But last minute... Out of sheer curiosity, Thanks, Larissa, Bien, he removes the geographic restriction. Shrouded in the universal message of peace, the file looks to be from a secret admirer. Oh, this is like the... Ooh, is this a classic? Once opened, the full file extension reveals itself. Hey, thank this you, Tip. Thanks for some Come Dragon. It uses an exploit in early computer systems that allowed it to run system code simply by being opened. The top two files are sent to the Windows System folder, where they wait. The this bottom one is sent to the, the Windows directory. production on this is off the fucking charts. Key in the local machine registry. This causes other programs to run as soon as the system boots, before the user even has a chance to log in. From there, it opens Internet Explorer and randomly picks from a series of four web pages. Once landed, it downloads winbugsfix.exe. Then it adds another registry key at the starting line. Okay. It gathers the system. What does it all mean? Password, IP address, oh. and remote access information. Packages it up neatly and sends it to mailme at super.net.ph. After the details are sent, I love that he has like his own little fucking video game world here to enter. Like .js or it's like Code Miko shit. It overwrites them Thank you. with the file extension. It does the same for JPEGs <laughs> and MP3s, rendering them completely unretrievable. World's deadliest computer virus. Once the damage is done, the worm enters Outlook, scans for emails, then sends itself using the originator's email Thank address. Thank you, Tier 1 Seagull and Resub Room Book. Destruction is now spreading through a message of peace and love. You are mm. watching Disrupt TV. This is movie quality shit here. From Philippines to Hong Kong, the virus has infected several large corporations and banks. Not only deleting important files within the companies, look but the email listings of all individuals in contact. From there, it jumps to Europe, where it wreaks particular damage to the email servers within the House of Commons. They're forced to shut down, same with the Denmark Parliament. With classified documents in danger of being wiped out. Who the fuck the opened I Love You emails at the Parliament building? Nobody's getting an I love you message there. ...that the Air Force had previously placed across bases throughout the country. It then creates a sort of window for centralized command... What to is this? Exit tier 1, Nathan. Computer virus. The email matches yeah, the description. Command sends a TCP reset video. to that desktop. It's giving Just explaining the virus? Before. Yeah. And what... It's a, like a history lesson. Oh. <sighs> private sector That's boring. ...is not so lucky. 
Oh, most well, companies I highly disagree. Outlook, including AT&T and Ford. They are forced to take their email servers offline. Brings you tier one year for in the, the prime Nardo. Fifty-five million computers, along with the emails, a second spreader has been identified. Within the original files, one is named M I R C. Dot I and I. Oh, this I thought it was gonna be a dude's name. IRC client. It was just a picture of my dad. It automatically he was spreading it back in 2000. Contacts that the victim may share on a server. Instead of a love letter, though, it sends this message. Thinking it's a legit file, tech-savvy users of IRC would recognize the name, the author of MIRC. It's only after running this. Things you give sub your friend in the resub cartridge. Do with it. Security analysts are scanning the virus, looking for clues as to the origin. They find that a component within closely resembles a password cracker named that was discovered four months earlier. They find within it signed names and resumes, an entry that says, in the resume portion is an extended list of- Like the Joker with a calling card. Along with a group title. Good man. This traces back to an after-school club at a computer college in the Philippines. An apartment is raided. Inside is a man, a woman, and an empty desk with a dusty outline of a Gateway Performance 1500. <laughs> the man, now identified as Romo Ramones, is the boyfriend of Irene de Guzman. Oh, is this something that actually happened? the older sister of a student yeah. in the college. No, I thought it was just explaining what could have happened just if so happens this happened. To be on the list. What? I didn't know that they actually had a virus go through. When was this? 2000. Oh, well, that's why. Exit tier one, Pinkerton, the prime Kawarta. Resub Jake. You're gonna find it's a lot lighter than usual as you drive eastbound from the... That was Love Shack by the B-52s. You're listening to 102.7 KISS FM. Folks, it's a sunny 75.5 degrees in Los Angeles. It's fucking three. Why would I know about this? It's when a portion well, Friday. You know the rules. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember it super well either, but... I don't know why it'd be a fake history lesson. I didn't realize that it was a history lesson. I mean, he's just explaining what happens if a virus goes through and all this stuff happens. I didn't know it was something that really happened that way. That it was just going through like the, this could happen if this... Uh. I get you. Very recognizable as our current day web. This is before dot coms and dot orgs. Hey, he said like a history lesson. Doesn't make Pseudo me think it actually happened and it's an actual Just history lesson. A telephone number for ARPANET. ARPANET was the first wide area network that allowed different connections to send information to each other. Also known I wonder if they're going to bring up my old website here for evidence. He I remember I had a Pixo. His home modem. Sure enough, Maybe that's the key. He's gained access to the University of California, Berkeley. Diving further, he discovers there's potential government documents hidden behind a password. He tries guessing. He tries U C B. Good week, guess. Dante continues logging in. For him, it's less about obtaining sensitive information or leaking it, more about gaining power, snooping around, seeing how far he can cross the line. On one of his deep dives, he makes a fatal error. He forgets to mask his login name. <laughs> Why even make the login name your name? Miles away. Make it like Dick Hard Thundercock or something. Kevin. Who cares? He continues. The kid answers the door. He's greeted by the Los Angeles DA. They seize his computer, but since he's underage, he isn't charged. Now he works for NSA. In the back reaches Interior one sentient salt in the resub Mosha in the two subs limit are clearing out unpaid storage units. I've already seen that seagull. Job. It's like a Break 300 million view video. Clear out the belongings, auction off what they can. But in this particular unit, they find something. The Stanford Research Institute 
one of the centers impacted by the previous escapades, the reaches prime, right? out to Kevin, proposing that he works for them, securing their network. The 18-year-old is hired. Hey, congrats, Kevin! Fuck yeah! He's to a few blocks from the main entrance. Big pickup. He spends his days working on encryption algorithms for secure military communications. He's successfully gone from an underground black hat hacker to a white hat hacker with a paycheck. Detective James Neal of the Menlo Park PD thinks he's looking at a standard case of stolen property. The storage bill is assigned to Thanks a the anonymous John gift Anderson. A quick search finds this name to be a fake. <laughs> Upon further inspection of the unit, the detective finds blank IDs and a document containing an unpublished number of the Soviet embassy. Oh boy! Another document. We've been infiltrated. The name. I see the five gift subs Shuby in the prime urinal goblin and dad kisser. Cool name. The National Bureau of Investigation issues a mandatory court appearance for two students. Onel de Guzman, who originally proposed the thesis, and Michael Buen, who is suspected to have helped write the structure of the warrant. This is trial date still pending 21 years later. <laughs> One day we'll ask him about it. The worm continues its spread, though the effects are beginning to weaken. A press conference is called. The guest of honor, Onel de Guzman. When asked if he is the one who unleashed the virus, Onel states, and when questioned if he feels anything, oh come about on, the go caused, go hard with the supervillain shit. Mumbles nothing, then covers his ears. Being the first large-scale computer crime out of the Philippines, Thanks, the, the Jeff. authorities have trouble charging an L. And drop bears. Over the subsequent months, right, the Philippine had a good day. Congress passed legislation dealing with computer-related crimes. But seeing as this was made official after Anel's stunt, he can't be charged. Ultimately, the case against him boils down to credit card fraud. Onel never <clears throat> admits to creating some sticky keys and resub plants. may have inadvertently released the program. All charges against him are dropped. In total, the estimated damages are said to exceed in wipe files. Wow, not bad. For cleanup. Fuck yeah, Onel de Guzman. Congrats. He finally admits to creating the virus and releasing it. He said he did it. Alone. But why? What did he want? The madman! ...DBS files have been written. And... Nope. It's been overwritten. It will not boot. Exit Prime. Narfols right and resub... The cybersecurity specialist... Lyricity? ...is deep in an organization's... Yeah, we'll do that man in a bit. He's well equipped to face any situation that may arise. But he started at the fundamentals. Is offering computer science courses at a fraction of the cost of traditional university rates. Wait, this is absolutely an ad. To become a network engineer, cybersecurity Yeah, oh, it, it was <laughs> still so well produced, I thought it was part of the hack. <laughs> Shit, they almost had me. God. It's like the fucking Chris Angel pre-commercial, <laughs> yeah, pre-commercial shit. It's Pulsing so fucking cool. Questioning. He denies everything. Please read some Zeus. A few hours later, they accompany him to I his I thought that said I forgot the sign, law, not I fought the law. <laughs> I was like, what? One of these is a lineman's headset. This device can be connected wherever there are exposed telephone wires accessible. When connected to a line, the handset is essentially indistinguishable from regular telephones, except it can intercept oh, man, active calls, wires. answer incoming calls, and make outgoing Imagine calls. To straighten all those wires Back out. then, you needed yeah. a license them. to operate it. Something Kevin is lacking. They confiscate some of the equipment and start their investigation. Is that Kevin, that son of a bitch? And equipment. They Going in there to flip over a fax machine? Pictures. A young slender male crouching down and picking the lock Slenderman. of a pacific bell trailer 
Further pictures show Whoa. the same subject inside the telephone trailer. Posing with it. We got him! Thanks for resub, Shabay. The past four years, Polson has been finding a particular thrill in dumpster diving. Okay. This will be your last chance to get the... Who doesn't love a good dumpster, using huh? those to gain access to physical networks. You FBI ever dumpster dive? Nope. Around I just like garbage trucks. <laughs> then, like a real man. Catch me if you can. The agents immediately trace the call, only to be led straight to a Pacific Bell number. Instead of jumping town and heading out of the country, Kevin decides to stay five subs, Chance. And three sub Nocturne. Dyes his hair a different color. Thank you, Chance. Picks up a new identity. To get some quick cash, he utilizes his phone line skills in an all too easy scheme. We're sorry. All of our representatives are still assisting other coaches. It's a sunny 75.5 degrees in Los Angeles, and today isn't just any... Dark Souls win. Friday. Soon, we'll hit more Dark Souls soon. It's win a Porsche Friday. You know the rules. Thanks, it's tier one monolithic. I want a bit. Two. Yeah, let's sleep well. <sighs> let's roll. Kevin flips a switch. Six. Blocks every other caller from reaching the line. Now, any line that is picked up would redirect to him. You don't have to be up for anything. Including the 102nd. Not early. <laughs> Congratulations, you've won a brand new Porsche. Who's the lucky winner? <laughs> wow, I can't believe it. This makes it tier one Gantz. Michael B. Peters. <clears throat> one can only speculate about what motivated Kevin Polson. Oh, God. Before he fled a it's non pedophile hunter Chris Hansen. Man, possibly a genius. But now he is a wanted man facing up to 37 years in prison. Prison, prison, prison. A TV show has just aired an episode about Kevin's hacks. The show opens their phone lines to callers that may have tips about the subjects. On the premiere of this particular episode, the phone lines are jammed. Classic Kevin. During his time laying, he released an EMP an device. Squad, a division focused on public order crimes like narcotics and gambling. Pick up Kevin. On an undisclosed minor crime. Eventually, though, they release him, failing to check the federal warrant database. That was lucky. The feds have received a tip that Kevin is still living in LA. Things to give sub against the question some of his acquaintances. One says that he frequents. Market. They go to the store, give the employees his picture, and wait. Just go to a different market. You can't be forming Ryan habits Bridges as a criminal. Is working the night shift. Got to keep him on their toes. He spots a familiar face. Kevin has dyed his hair a light blonde, but it isn't enough. Hey, Wheeler, thanks for the five gift subs, man. Dials the authorities, ensuring Kevin doesn't spot him. By the time they arrive, Kevin is gone. For the next 24 hours, the agent on duty, Terry, stakes out the parking lot. Makes the prime see that. Terry takes a position at the front door. Two clerks sneak up behind Kevin and tackle him to the <gasps> Hearing the But it wasn't Kevin. In, it was a nine year old schoolboy, Kevin Page. him into the back room to impersonate him. Can arrive. As if on cue, Kevin begins complaining that his eyes are watering. He requests that he take his contact lenses out and get the glasses from a bag in his car. Terry agrees and retrieves the bag, but he checks it before handing it over. Sure enough, in the glasses case is a universal handcuff key. Oh, wait, what? I still think it's super dumb that all handcuffs use the same key. I think that's so fucking dumb. What, a, what an oversight. She recognizes the phrase and calls one of Kevin's hacker friends who subsequently retrieves an incriminating computer from an undisclosed location. However, the police are a step ahead. Months earlier, they recruited a local hacker to infiltrate the local LA hacker circle. He rings the bell and the incriminating computer is intercepted. It takes nearly nine months for them to decrypt it. Nearly two years after his arrest, Polson is accused of 19 counts that include conspiracy, uh, rough. connection with access devices, they got interception of wire or electronic communications, 
and money laundering. He faces 100 years in prison and nearly 5 million in fines. Give him a job. This is considered one of the first large-scale cases against the newly defined crime prime, toad. of hacking. If successfully charged, they hope to send a clear message to the mid-90s hacking community. Eventually, Polson pleads guilty to several counts of computer fraud. Why are fraud, people arrested for money laundering? And money laundering. He's ordered to are pay the k in fines and given a 51-month sentence. Kevin is released on parole. By court order, he's barred from using computers. For the first time in the 2000s, he flips the switch. He gains access. No, Kevin, fuck! Wait, 2012? Okay, this is, this, this is the question. Did I ever consider leaving California altogether, going across the country? Um... I, I did consider that, but and I, I think don't this, think I'm gonna this watch CS:GO Rage. It doesn't sound very I fun. I wanted to solve the problem, not run away from it. Oh, I thought he turned into Tony Hawk for a second. He gave up hacking, and now he just skateboards. Hey. So, I was just thinking about how everyone in the world has their own conscience, their own lives, everything. Uh, everyone alive is living. Uh, so then I thought about uh, how much computer processing power it would Pretty impressive! Uh, everybody's not conscience. Not bad. Uh, I'm not saying that our universe is simulated. Uh, I don't actually believe in that theory. Oh, okay. Uh, all okay. I'm saying is that- Is this Kevin? Uh, just stop for a moment uh, and think about how much uh, processor power would be required to simulate everybody's conscience. Um, another thing. Okay, uh, we don't need to get too deep into the weeds of simulated universe, I suppose. I'm 